Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Bill McClure, a longtime serial entrepreneur and domain investor of 20 plus years. Today, Bill and I discuss his entrepreneurial roots and 35 years of experience in owning and operating the family's funeral and insurance businesses. We also discuss how exiting multiple family businesses position Bill to invest in a Florida-based stainless steel manufacturer, a flower import operation, and a teleflower company later known as eFlowers.com that was sold to FTD in the early 2000s. Bill then highlights the invaluable relationships as well as the good, the bad, and ugly pertaining to his domain investing journey that dates back to the mid-1990s. Bill also shares why and how he arrived at his sweet spot of buying domains in the 5 to 20K range, having made purchases at or well above the 100K mark, like the coffee.org purchase story. And last but not least, as if Bill needed one more thing to do, Bill unveils how he and partners are conquering the world of portable restrooms with high-end products and services branded as Royal Thrones. So with that, Bill, welcome, and thank you for making time to join us today. Good morning, Alvin. How I'm are you? <laughs> oh, I'm great. I'm great. I'm traveling today as I uh, we're on the way to pick up uh, one of our Royal Throne trailers in Indianapolis, um, or northern Indiana, actually. And so I'm on a little vacation with my bride. That is of awesome. Many years. <laughs> that is awesome. And we and just before we started recording, uh, it we're, we're, it just so happens that we're recording this on a Monday morning and we both were talking about how excited we are to see Mondays roll around. And so, uh, so yeah, so, so Bill is, is definitely over the moon <laughs> in terms of, uh, getting back to, to a good week, kicking this week off, off right. And so Bill, I guess for, for listeners that may not know who you are, briefly share, you know, at a high level with our listeners, just a bit about yourself, who you are, your personal professional background. Alvin, I am a, uh, I am a funeral director. My, uh, I grew up in the funeral business. My first 35 years was owning funeral homes with my dad and by solos in the mid eighties. And what I thought I had enough money to retire and when I was 35 years old, well, that doesn't take very long to know you don't. <laughs> so I ended up investing in some companies in Florida, a, a stainless steel manufacturer, and then a flower import operation. And that led to buying a 800 flower company called Flowers Direct uh, out of Boca Raton. And so a few years later into the mid 90s, the uh, internet came along and we bought flowersdirect.com later eflowers.com still had the import operation which was completely separate we had about 200 800 lines that came in and 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 that's where i got my start and in those days we were building the first websites were built in cold fusion and they took a long time to build they were all <laughs> hand coded it was these were the days of prodigy and CompuServe, and there was no aol and there was no uh, easy way to do it Flash was not here at that time. There wasn't, uh, it wasn't digitally produced. It was strictly hard coded. So we went through that business and grew that online business up, sold it to FTD in early 2000s, and then started a company called Traffic Strategies with my son and his partner. It is actually their company. And we grew that up and sold that to Linkshare and Rocketon in 2007 invested in a bunch of domains along the road. I guess I started buying domains in 96, 97. And, and, and it was fun in those days because by 2007, when I had some cash, the traffic conferences were going. And Rick and Howard New and his wife, Barbara, really did help me get into the domain space. And there was, uh, my first domain conference was in New York. I'm thinking maybe 2007 or so at the Hyatt. And I bought in the Monty Khan's auction, I bought discount flower shop and annuitypolicies.com. And that was the beginning of me buying a couple of good word domains. And I can teach you that through today. I've always been a exact match type acquirer. 
and literally had thousands of them. I don't have thousands today, but I have close to a thousand. I have panned that down, but there were some real key people in those days that helped me. Uh, a guy named Rob Grant, and many of you know him, and has a daughter, Lizzie. He was so nice to me, Larry Fisher, and some of the older domainers that a guy named Lonnie Bork, who's now gone, uh, Greg McNair, and Ron Jackson, uh, Dr. Chris Hartman. I, those, these are just people that come to mind just that really did influence me and helped me buy some good domains. I also bought some junk, too, uh, <laughs> as we all do. But had I listened to a, a guy named Sahara, which I haven't seen in many, many years, was at this conference, and he owned funeralhomes.com. Well, as you know, I came out of the funeral home business, and he said that he liked to buy two-word domains like that. So that's where I got my start to buy. Today, I recently, we acquired cheapflowers.com. We own many, many different two-word domains from we specialized in the insurance industry, and we bought domains like keyinsurance.com and cremation insurance. We bought funeral home domains like cremationservices.com. Royal Thrones, I'll talk a little more about that. That's one of my new investments of about three years ago. And snack warehouse, office saver, coffee bags, print shirt, diet bars. I bought diet bars after seeing diet food sell for 45000 I was able to go and buy diet bars for a few thousand. I don't remember how much, but somewhere along in there. Anyway, that's how I got my start. And uh, uh, I've been influenced by many, many older domainers uh, and younger domainers, you know. Uh, so, Bill, let me <laughs> ask you this then, because hearing this story, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, probably just blown away just by that. I mean, that expansive breadth of experience. And so, you know, one of the things that when I hear when you were talking about like Flowers Direct, so coming into obviously you already had business experience. Your family comes with background and generations of folks who have been in business. And so in terms of moving from the industrial age into the information age, like, did you have a clue of what the internet would become and how much the domain would, would be of great value? Like, did that cross your mind as you were, you know, making transitions from as a funeral director or funeral homeowner or, um, a funeral business owner rather into, you know, the flowers direct business. Like, did you have a sense of what was to come to, you know, some 20, 30 years down the road where we're at today? No, I had no idea. The, uh, the two domains, well, we actually had hundreds of domains that we bought in the flower segment in the nineties. And one of them in 97 or 98, there was a company called eBay that was launched, and then E-Trade and E-Toys. And I was single at the time, and the lady I was dating said, Bill, why don't you go find eFlowers.com? And so I did, with Mark Ostrowski owned it out of Houston, who sold business.com. And Mark and I made a deal to buy it. I put it into Flowers Direct. I didn't really know what I had, but we had it built in a digital platform, unlike Flowers Direct, which was in a, uh, I guess what I would call an analog, but HTML platform. And so that gave me a start, and I just rode that wave up into 2002, and then FTD and 800 Flowers uh, got in a bidding war to buy us in FTD1, and so we sold eFlowers.com for a million dollars. And we sold Flyers Direct for $6 million. That's, Now, Flyers Direct had an operating business behind it. So I was about somewhere around 40 years old at the time. And I went to Aspen for the summer. And I had my pockets, had some cash in it. And I came back to Tampa where we lived. And my son was there and had a little consulting operation, uh, SEO consulting. And uh, I said, you know what? I went out to Aspen, I spent the summer, and I decided whatever I'm going to invest in next is going to be technology-driven, something we know something about. And I think that about that time, there was a company called Overture that was selling paperclip. And 
I said, I think we, and we had just finished, we used Overture to grow flowers direct at eflowers.com. And I said, I think we can do this and get paid by people like Flowers Direct who will pay us to drive traffic and thus the affiliate business. Now, there was really not much of an affiliate business. I think maybe a company called Link Exchange and CJ was just new on the horizon. Link Share was new and we, we actually knew those people. So that got us in the affiliate space and we bought disc, that's the, not discount, we bought departmentstoresonline.com. And we built that little business up in Tampa, which was called Traffic Strategies. And I say we, it's really my son and his partner. But we just, we started out making a lot of cash and we just, we just kept at it. So really, Bill, then, I guess in the early days, you really weren't considered a domain investor per se, but more really a domain developer? I would say that I was just a serial entrepreneur and I was looking for businesses, <laughs> any kind of business. You know, I mean, we I invested in a stainless steel operation that made grocery checkout counters for Publix and, oh, a number of other investments. Now, I will tell you, I invested in a lot of bad stuff, too. <laughs> and it was not every deal I did <laughs> did not win. I did have a few more winners than I did losers to stay here today. But you know, I mean, when you're gonna when you're firing out there, you're gonna hit some losses. It Great. just happens. Now, and, and even in that though, I look and say with your wins, while many people will clamor to hear about what you won, how you won it. And then I also, you know, respect the, the losses because that adds to just your overall wisdom, your life experience that actually probably gives you the edge to a certain extent as, you know, you accumulate more wins, you accumulate more losses, but hopefully the next time uh, around, you're, you're probably, I, I guess, even pulling from some of those losses that are helping you formulate and realize, you know, greater wins in the future. Is that, I guess, is that an accurate statement? And there's no doubt. I mean, you, you, you got to remember the, the mistakes you make. And unfortunately I've made the same mistakes over and over as much <laughs> as I try not to. It just seems like uh, in this online. Now, one of the problems for me is that I go fast and I make decisions fast and you make some bad mis- you make some bad decisions. I could list off a dozen of them. Uh, <laughs> How fast that, is fast? It, well, I, you know, I just look at it as, as if this is a permanent decision, then I'll take some time to make it. But if I can recover from it, I'll make it in a minute. <laughs> like you say, hey, let's go and do this. And I say, I can afford it. And I like your style. I like your what you say. And I, you know, I do it so much on a gut feeling, but being in the, getting in the internet and then having uh, an opportunity every day, whether it's office furniture, it's uh, flowers or insurance or the seniors space. I mean, if you talk to me about a deal, I love deals. I'm a deal guy. And that gets you in trouble because <laughs> you don't focus. You know, I've never been able to focus. They, they call that. You know, I have all kinds of names for it. My wife would call it ADD or whatever. I guess I've had it all my life, but I never called it that. You know, I just, I, I, I'm just a guy that makes things happen. Hey, Bill says I call it. A, a, he's a gentleman of acquired varied interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, the online, the online business just fits me. So then, Bill, <laughs> let me ask you this then. It, because you talk about the the different deals, the you know the varied interests here. So, how did you go out? F- did you go out finding these types of deals, or were they brought to you, or you know, just kind of walk us through how you got involved in all these these different paths? Well, you know, Rick Schwartz and Howard New have to be the most influential in my last twenty five year career. They didn't get me started in it, but once I got into buying domains, and I was never a, I, I've never been a guy to go register a bunch of domains. I've always bought on the secondary market, and I've, I believe I, for the most part, have always paid a fair price, if not a high price. I bought domains. I paid a hundred thousand dollars for Coffee dot org one time, and I paid usually a sweet spot for me was 
five to twenty thousand. So custom t shirt dot com, I might have paid ten thousand for. I just recently sold that for forty thousand. Cheap flowers, thirty five thousand dollars. So somewhere between five and ten thousand usually has been my sweet spot. And I acquired I acquired literally thousand domains in, in that market. Wow. So then, well, wait a minute. Now you said that you bought coffee. What was it? Coffee dot org. Okay, for a hundred thousand. Uh, mm-hmm. My my daughter wanted to get in the coffee business. I had sold tra- We had sold traffic strategies to Linkshare, and so I said, "Well, if we're going to do it, we got to go buy a single word domain that means coffee." Now, that was a critical error. If, if you want to know some of those biggest errors that you make, that was one of them because I got caught up in that. I wanted a one word domain and I thought I had coffee.com bought. I did not, was not able to close it. The seller just it, it went off to the accounting side of the company and, and it never did close. And mm-hmm. so I found a family in Hawaii that owned coffee.org. And that was my second choice. And through CEDO, we were able to acquire it. That's another story. But even today, that's been uh, 12, 15 years ago. We built this coffee company up on it. And I go to the country club today and people say, oh, it's buildcoffee.com. And so for years and years and years and years, I tell people it's coffee.org and they don't get it. <laughs> and, uh, and so when you build a brand... Well, we had our daughter involved in the company, and, she, and we named it Miss Ellie's Coffee. Mm. But people never did. You know, the brand didn't work. I've also bought I, I, I bought a number of companies in that space, in the coffee space, along with a lot of domains. And mm. one of the worst domains and companies that I ever bought was cw-usa.com. <laughs> and that stands for coffeewholesaleusa.com. And it was uh, an old Yahoo site, and I paid $500,000 for it. Obviously, I didn't pay it for the domain, but they had the worst domain in the world, and that's the only domain. They may have had a few others, but they didn't have many. So I was able to, I first of all, said, well, i got to go buy coffeewusa.com. And I did from cable and wireless, a, a, a company in Texas. And then I bought coffeeusa.com and all the ones around those. But it still goes by cwusa.com and it has does 100 grand a month in business, wholesale coffee business, and we roast and ship out of it. So, so, so those they, are two bad acquisitions. I mean, two, two bad domain acquisitions. <laughs> so then, it, what, what's interesting to me is there's a bit of this, there's a bit of, domain you know you're purchasing domains but really it's you're purchasing the coffee operation now i guess help me understand or paint a picture for me in terms of when you say you are coffee.org like how does that business work i mean i'm assuming you you're um growing coffee beans and harvesting them or you know just kind of help 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 me get an understanding of what's going on there when you say coffee.org like what type of organization is this Coffee is grown in around the equator, about 200 miles off of the equator, all around the world. So it's grown in, in high uh, elevations, anywhere from four to 8,000 feet, I guess. Um, imported in, we bring it in from 13 countries. We have several importers, but one primary importer that brings it into Kansas City. And then those are green beans. And they smell like alfalfa, hey, if you're a farmer or come from a, the country. And then you roast those, and they turn into brown, and they pop like popcorn. Hmm. And we we roast them and package it and ship it fresh. Uh, we roast every day. We package it in a variety of packages from portion packs uh, for offices to liquid coffee for casinos and K-cups. Uh, for the carry consumer, 2020 was not kind to us. And the fact that all of the casinos closed for months, and that was a big piece of our business, and all the offices closed in Chicago and New York and different parts of the country, and that was a big piece of our business. And we kind of pumped up the 
the subscription portion to the consumer, but here is the and it and it helped us survive. And I would say we did a good job at it. But a consumer buys twenty to thirty dollars a month, and our average order is eighty dollars a month. Non casino casino throws that number way off, but mm. just an average office buys about eighty or ninety dollars a month, and you can make some money on that. You can't make any money at twenty five thirty dollars, and you got to do thousands of orders. So that's a that's been a challenge, but uh, you know we survived. And I haven't been to the coffee operation, and I only live two miles from it. I have not been there during the week in over a year. I go in on Saturdays and walk the floors, and I, I talk to them every day on Zoom. And I love this new uh, working from home, and <laughs> I feel like you got to be there. <laughs> and I've really gotten it back in the domain business, man. I I have I had the best year of selling domains over the last twelve months that I've ever had. And I don't I don't buy domains anymore, really. I've enjoyed. I I'll tell you that's that's really the benefit of the domain business are the friends I made it. And I was thinking as we were talking this morning about, you know, the people that have been influential to me. And, you know, I remember meeting Warren Royal before there was Bobbleheads and Mike Birkins and Amar. He had Traffic Z at the time, Joe Styler, Larry Fisher, Ari, and, you know, all of the people. And then after that were the people like yourself, Elliot and Andrew and Shane the B-Man and Mike Seiger. There's just been so many that have been influential to me. What's interesting is it's it's like the next generation is is coming along, and you know, as the internet is changing, as our lives are changing, obviously that next generation is coming along. I guess the one thing that doesn't change is the domain name in and of itself, or at least it hasn't changed up to now. And so you mentioned something there that you had your best year, and so I, you know, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man. Okay, so Bill doesn't necessarily hand register. Um, I didn't. I don't know if you were even dabbling in, you know, auctions. It seems like most of your your purchases are third party purchases, and so with that, you know, it made me really think about like, wow, like you're really buying the upper echelon of names, if you will, likely holding those names, um, either that you've acquired because of a business deal through a business deal. But then in terms of uh, selling those, so I, I'm assuming some of those losses, you're able to recoup some of your your investment just by selling the domain name. Is that is that an accurate statement? Well, I think so. And, and uh, about a year ago, I guess I started listing them on After Nick. And Joe Styler has always been a close friend of mine. And and he's in, encouraged me to list them. You know, I always felt like I was going to develop all of these. Like, hey, I don't, I don't sell that. I mean, I fall in love with them. <laughs> I've worked real hard to buy that domain, <laughs> regardless of what it costs. And that, and my children just didn't, they didn't believe in the, and, and still don't believe in the domain business. Now, they're, they're more amenable. And my wife was even less impressed with the domains <laughs> she now has seen these i mean seen these sales come in these offers and uh she's worried what she would do if something happened to me and i've frankly been worried about that now i'm 67 years old and you know i'm on the back nine so i think it's important to figure out you know what you're going to do how you're going to do it I, I worry about it and so, you know, today I'm looking for young people to put in business to, to take it and expand it. One of the businesses that we've got is cremationservices.com. And this is a, it's a directory of funeral homes and crematories or what have you. Well, it really needs to be its own service. It gets a lot of traffic. And so if I can find somebody that's in that business that wants to make a national company, I'll put them in business. Same, same thing with, uh, we have a lot of insurance. My son's in the commercial insurance business. We own a lot of insurance domains like keyinsurance.com and oh, cremationinsurance.com and the list goes on. And, um, 
So then, Bill, let me ask you this about that, because obviously coming from a, a Western mindset in terms of, you know, death and just funerals in and of itself, oftentimes one thinks about death, one thinks about burial plot, caskets and whatnot. Now, is cremation services, is that something that is on the rise or, uh, you know, or do, you know, if many people have that option of choosing casket cremation, like what are you seeing most people starting to to move towards today? Well, it's by far funeral industry was very stable for many, many, many years all through my career. We might have done oh less than two or three percent non traditional funerals, and today, and over the last fifteen to eighteen years, that began to change. Over fifty percent of the deaths occurred. Families are choosing an alternative method to disposition rather than cremation. Now, there's a couple of reasons, I mean, rather than traditional funerals. There's a couple of reasons for that is that, one, people don't live in the same place they've always lived. If you lived in, in Chicago in, throughout the last 75 years, Odds are you stayed in the same neighborhood. Or if you lived in Cordell, Oklahoma, you stayed in the same area. And today, people move around. They're not in the same markets. And so they don't have the same burial plots, and they make they change. And so that, that's increased the, the fact that uh, there are more cremations. And I think people today, they don't have the same religious beliefs. Mm. that they've had through the years. And so there's just a number of things that's caused that to change. And I will tell you that COVID has completely expanded that. They anticipate that today it's about 50% or just a tad over in the United States. They expect it to be 75% cremation in 2025. Wow. That's four years from now. So I believe that now cremationservices.com makes it on it now has a real future for it. As I hear typing in my head of the many listeners that are probably <laughs> going over to GoDaddy to, to type in the word keyword cremation to see what what's available. Yeah, I own a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been buying them for 25 years before it was even cool to buy them. In fact, right. my daddy would turn over in his grave if he knew that I was supporting cremation day. But now, now he died 30 years ago and he was a traditionalist and a, he loved his, what he did and he believed in what he did and and he was a gentleman and but he did not believe in cremation. And yet and yet the world has has changed and evolved. And so fast. Right. Who right. could believe that it would change this fast? Exactly. And here you are evolving with it. I, you know, I just at the right place at the right time. We were very fortunate and very lucky. Yeah. Now, Bill, let me ask you this. Now, growing up, did you ever think that? And I and you're sit in a you sit in a a um, a unique position here because a part of me, you know, part of folks that come into the domain in- industry often come in investing in domains. Whereas I kind of see the play for you as you came in really from the business. Uh, side of it so like growing up like would you have ever thought hey you reached i think you said you were what 66 yeah seven 67 so did you ever think hey growing up that you would reach 67 and a basically a part of your livelihood would be centered around domains no absolutely i mean uh i did buy i did buy a radio shack model two in the 70s with well, it was right in the beginning of, of personal computers, but I was not a conehead by any means. In fact, <laughs> the whole time I was in the uh, in the Flowers Direct, I mean, I didn't know any how to check my email. I love to tell people about it. I would love to tell you, hey, go to Prodigy and go on our website and see you can actually order. Well, it was a it was a disaster to order in those days. Like one percent of our business was was online. Until we fixed the checkout where you could check out. The reason it was only 1% is because it was broke. And after a, uh, somebody showed me that it was broke and we fixed it, we went 25% of our business went to online. I mean, overnight. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. amazing. 
Wow. And then I told me, that's when it told me that, hey, there's a real business here. And this online business, and what is this called? WWW Internet? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? I paid seventy five thousand dollars for flyersdirect.net. I don't I I hope someday some in some domainer tells me, Hey, you bought that from me because I don't even know who we bought it from. But I had bought the dot com, I got the getting flowers direct trademarked and cured, which meant that it was a pretty generic term at the time and it took a while to get it cured. We got it cured and which of course there was no protection for the dot coms when they came out because even though we might have had the trademark, that mean that meant nothing. There was no so you had to just go buy it, write a check. If I'd only known if I'd only known I'd have sat in my basement and I'd have been rich to <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> like well, Fisher and Birkins and all those guys were doing. So that that was gonna be the next question of coming along like you did in and that in that you know, mid nineties, one would have thought, I would have thought at least the light bulb would have gone off and said, okay, Hey, I'm paying for these third party domains. Let me go try my hand at hand registering. I didn't know how. And I felt like I was so busy that that this was just going to be a bad anyway. <laughs> and I, uh, and then I sold a company unrelated to the online business. I sold a company in 2000 and it was May of 2000. And I thought, I got a pocket full of cash now, and I'm going to put it all in this online business. And that was in maybe March, April of 2000. And by August, I had lost 75%. And I didn't buy junk. I didn't think. I bought Microsoft, and I bought CNET, and I bought other types of online businesses. Now, I will tell you, there were like 40 flower companies that went public during those days, except we did not. My sister and I owned Flowers Direct. We were one of the few that did not go public. And so we were able to buy a number of these domains out of bankruptcy courts over the next few years. Now, that's interesting. So buying a domain out of bankruptcy court, like how does that work? Well, they've got assets and they've got to liquidate them. USA Florist was one of them. It was uh, flowers. There were some some other flower uh, domains that we bought out of uh, different bankruptcy courts. Now, we did not buy this, but we tried to buy Garden.com. And most of these companies had raised 20 to $50 million, and they never made a quarter. Nor had we ever made a quarter in it, too, I will tell you that. We just kept investing and. I got lucky with a partnership with J.C. Penney's. We we partnered with them, and they let us take the J.C. Penney credit card. And in those days, people didn't have Mastercard or Visas. Right? They might have a gas- gasoline credit card, and your grandma she might have had a credit card, but it was a J.C. Penney's card. So they couldn't order flowers except through the local florist and write a check or pay cash. But then J.C. Penney's let us do flowers and they put us on their their five four inch catalog and their um, in their credit card statements and uh, and that really saved us that's what built flowers direct and eflowers.com for the big part now bill now now shifting to today in terms of obviously you said that that you spent a good bit of time doing um coffee.org and then obviously we heard at the very beginning you're you know you were traveling to go pick up one of your investments like what does a day or a week consist of for bill mcclure well i start early in the morning i'm a i'm an early riser so i'm in the game by five o'clock usually every day wait uh, wait, I what? I, wait hold on <laughs> five what five a.m that's when oh. i i wake, I wake up about 30 minutes before, and I'm into the coffee at 5 <laughs> o'clock, and I'm on the go. Oh, and I man. love that time because it's an early morning. It's quiet. I don't have to deal with anybody. I don't have to talk to anybody. But I can get a lot of stuff done between 5 and the time the rest of the world gets up. And I quit about 4.30. Uh, <laughs> I, I, always, I take a nap every day at 1 o'clock for 15, 20 minutes. And I've done that for 30 years. So my day is really is related to things I'm doing. For instance, one of the businesses 
that I invested in a few years ago, actually just partnered with a guy that had an RV company in Amarillo, Texas, and a very, very close friend of mine. And he said, hey, Bill, I've got these uh, restroom trailers, and I just bought a home up in Kennebunk, Fort Maine, and I got a friend up there, and I want to put some up there. And we we, we named this restaurant tra- or this restroom trailer Royal Thrones. You think we could, you could build us a website, maybe Royal Thrones of Texas and Royal Thrones of Maine? And I said, sure. I said, let me, I, I can get that. I said, well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and get all 50 states, Royal Thrones of all states. Mm-hmm. If we, we, you know, this got an opportunity. And by the way, we, we, if I'm going to help you do this, we need to go buy Royal Thrones. And if we buy Royal Thrones, we need to get this thing trademarked because if this really works, and this has been four or five years ago. This really works. This will be something that people will like. And he says, you know, they rent for almost $1,000 a day, and they cost $30,000, $40,000, and we pay for one, you know, 30 weeks if we rent it one day a week. So now we have 17 trailers in New England. We have 11 in Amarillo. Uh, we're going to put Three in Arkansas, where I am. We're going to put three in Dallas. And three in, are going to Midland, Texas, to one of our other daughters, Jack's daughters. Uh, we kind of got this in game. And, uh, you know, these 17 trailers in New England are staying out all the time. And, you know, they pay for them. So we pay for one every month or two. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's a cool deal. So if anybody wants to get in a new business, uh, we've got a lot of states that are going to be open for franchise at royalthrones.com. Royalthrones.com. Now, how did COVID impact in, impact this business, or did it? Well, yeah, it slowed it down because there were no events. Now, I will tell you who, and the events are back, the weddings and what. There were no weddings last year to speak of. Right. But there were there were companies that needed restroom trailers like McDonald's remodeling. Uh, they they rent from us. Mercedes, you know, anytime that somebody needs and these are air conditioned, heated. These are nice. Oh. And so these uh, aren't the old it, Texas porta potty type situation. This these is are like... not. You know, this is yeah. <laughs> He's like this is this is the top grade experience. That's right. That's right. We got multiple sizes and they rate for multiple prices. They're not inexpensive, but we've got some that have been out. Some insurance companies have had them rented for months and months and months. Of course, those are the best kind to have. But Oh, because of, uh, is that because of like natural disasters or like them going well, on site? Or? Either that or they've got more employees and they have restrooms and there's you know, ADA requirements and different requirements. They're going to have so many restaurants. I, I don't really know what causes them, but I do know what's looking at in the in the near future is that uh, the CDC has come out and said that, you know, you need more outdoor events. Well, for outdoor events, you got a choice. you got a stinking porta potty or you've got a really nice restroom, air conditioned. We put two stalls on the lady side and one stall on the men's side because ladies always want to go to the restroom together. Um, <laughs> and we make it for the brides to have enough room to change clothes of the bridesmaids and a lot of weddings, you know, and who knows what the, um, what the events, we think it's got a, uh, we're just now doing, working on the franchise. So we'll be able to franchise it. We'll also finance the trailers for somebody. Let's say we've got a guy in Tennessee that's wanting to buy a franchise doesn't have a lot of money. He's got some money. You know, you got to be committed. You have to have the passion that, hey, I'm going to run this business. We don't want somebody buying a franchise and then trying to hire people to do it. We want somebody that's got hands on it to take care of the customer. That is awesome. So, I mean, you keep, you pretty much stay busy then, sun up to sun down. <laughs> I am busy. I am busy. <laughs> My wife says, you don't need any more deals. <laughs> you do not need any more deals. <laughs> I do not come home and tell her I buy a domain, and I really don't buy many domains, but uh, <laughs> I would not be favorable at home. You know, and, and you know some of the stuff I've done, I, like the coffee club. It's really a cool deal, 
and it's only it was only a cool deal because of Colin, Jeff, and Michelle. But they're ones that put, you know said, "Hey, we've got this new uh, GTLD, and you're going to be the the canary in the coal mine," as Rick would say. And yeah, it it uh, it did okay. I wouldn't say it, you know, that it was crazy, but I will tell you, they had done everything they could do to make it good. Right. And it the co- coffee in and of itself does lend itself to the club extension uh, well. You know, I look at it, I go, not many, I guess you'd say businesses or, or you know, just the, the different types of businesses would lend themselves well to a club. But, you know, I think about, uh, I think, what was it? Soap.club. Yeah. Coffee.club. I think there's like a shave.club or something like that. It's like I look at those types of businesses as, as the ideal business. Um, now, I'd probably, me personally, I don't know about you, but me personally, I'm, I'd still choose the .com. But if, in that case, if you own the .com or .org or .net, uh, one word, then likely is the case. I mean, you you could choose that one word dot club and, and still do well, if not be able to uh, put marketing around it that that you do actually create and generate uh, greater awareness. Well, I I totally agree with that. I mean, in fact, I think it's a wonderful adjunct to to our business. And in fact, I don't know where you are uh, in Austin where we would come up if you type in coffee club, but it's going to be. Somewhere between two and number five organically, we don't buy pay-per-click for that. And it's always stayed on the front page. So I would have to say that there are very few companies that go out and start and are able to do that with a very high, high cost of positioning if you buy that keyword. And speaking of, Bill, I mean, like, what do you make of, I guess, the new extensions in terms of where things could turn, you know, a corner? Um, Obviously, they've been out for quite a while. So, you know, it's not like we're having this conversation two years into it. I mean, we're, what, a full decade or closing in on a full decade of the new extensions. I'm like, like, what do you make of them as, I guess, investments from a domain investing standpoint, but then also just investment in terms of, you know, developing those domains into businesses? Well, I think from the end user standpoint, there's some real value. I, I, I see a lot of banks. In fact, I saw one yesterday in the, in the wild, uh, a, a chambers dot bank. And I know that there are some very good extensions out there that have that are very good for the end user. Right. Now, I don't know about being an investor in them. I think that's a long shot. I, I would tell you this, having owned thousands of domains and bought really good ones and bought junk, <laughs> if I had it to do over and I was going to lead somebody down this path, I would help them buy a hundred great domains, dot coms, and stay in the game and try to keep them focused on really making a lot of money on a few domains rather than many, many, because I, I'm I'm just an example of that, that you can't do anything well if you're just going from one hat to the other hat to the other hat. Right. And I think that that's the the glimmer effect of domain investing is, you know, folks come in and, and they they hear or see, hey, somebody sold X, Y, Z dot com or whatever dot com for five figure, six figure, seven figure. And it's a mad dash to go rush to look at either the auctions or hand register to see what can I find that's near it that will likely, you know, if it's six figure, well, maybe it'll bring me a five figure sale. I I don't know. I've just seen so many stories that it's more likely that you're going to lose your shirt. If that, to say the least, then you are going to actually realize a big win um, investing that way. You know, I I think that's a really good point. And the, uh, the chance of winning. Now I, I I do have to say this. I've been on this clubhouse uh, for the last, I don't know, 90 or 120 days, however long it's been up. I was in there early with Colin and Jeff and Michelle. And I've gotten so excited about all of the new domainers that are now being able to taste what domaining's about. I think that I learned from the people like, oh, a new John Ferber and Ari and Chad Folkering and 
you know, the older domainers taught me so much. And I think that the new guys coming on, that some of us that were later in the game can teach today. And I think yourself, I think what you're doing, that these podcasts, I listen to you on a regular basis. And and I, I, I love it because I can play you fast and, and, and I can listen to four or five podcasts in a short period of time. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it, it, and, and man, I can catch up. I can learn all kinds of stuff. I, I don't remember who you had on Anita, somebody from India. Am I right on that? Yeah. Anita Walker. Okay. And I just, I just enjoyed her, all of her talk and you just have such a variety, but so do you. And a lot of other guys in that, um, if you follow Elliot or Shane, and he's always been a good friend of mine, and uh, you know, there's just there's just something that uh, domainers are willing to give back, and I think that the clubhouse is, is a good example of that. That people are are glad to help, and I'm so glad to see Rick. I mean, as rough around the edge as he may be, he's probably the smartest, one of the <laughs> smartest of us. Of ever, and he's always been nice to me, and I, that's what I really have tried to kind of give back to new domainers is being nice to them and offering help because all of these guys did it to me, and and I think about that today. Yeah, and that's uh, that's one thing, and I'm glad that you actually mentioned that because of uh, Clubhouse, because obviously when we think back, I just about the time I was about to decide to attend traffic it all ended um and so you know i've heard so many different stories of oh yeah traffic 2007 2008 or 2009 and you hear all of these uh varied stories or when rick had his i guess chat room or you know board you hear so many different stories of just people uh, making connection and relationship and and so forth and just networking it, it's as if clubhouse came along in the perfect storm that it brought the the old the existing as well as new all together in one setting in, in a way that likely is the case that many folks wouldn't you know it's like hey i i know bill because i know bill through uh one being around the industry you know having gone to some of the conferences and you know seeing you running across you but for the new person coming in you know they may not even realize okay well how do i get connected to a bill mcclure whereas clubhouse literally i mean as long as you have an ios device and you can get on like that puts you I mean, literally within a voice throw of a person to be able to ask questions. Um, and that is something that I think is unique and we'll see where it takes the, uh, the industry. I mean, and so is that, has that been your experience as well, I guess, in using clubhouse? Well, yes. And, and it's, to me, it's just renewed. It's just renewed my energy about the domain business. And, and two, I've always loved uh, the conferences and, you know, I've man, I've watched all you. You can't imagine over the last fifteen years the domains that Monty Khan has sold. And if, <laughs> if we, we, if that, if that was our story, and I could tell you of fifteen domains that either I didn't buy that I knew we should buy, or the ones I bought in those auctions, like I bought Bouquet dot com one day. Well, I knew what that. I knew what that business was, and I still own that that business. In fact, we had our biggest week last week, Mother's Day. But I think that you may very. I met you at a conference at uh, in North Carolina at, uh, at one of Rick's Asheville. Yeah, remember that? Sure did. Okay, so so there's Alvin Brown. Well, my goodness, I've heard of him. I heard of his podcast. Well, I'm so glad to meet Alvin. And I came from that from that conference and. Well, that was a real pleasure to be able to meet you. I had a chance to sit down with Mike Robinson and or Robertson and and visit. Hadn't seen him in a long time. Next guy walking down there, there's Morgan Linton, and he says, "Sit down, let's have some coffee." And you know, it's just that way that you might not see somebody for a long, long time, and we're like old friends, and we've all got the same addiction. And so it's a to me. Just getting to kind of catch up with people on Clubhouse, where we've been through this traumatic time of staying in, it's just a blessing. 
Oh, it is. Now, how now? How much time do you spend on Clubhouse? <laughs> well, I've got, I come on there about two times a week. Uh, I, I like the uh, pages Monday afternoon. I, 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 Colin and Jeff have a, a startup clubhouse that I, I try to attend. And then I missed Rick's last week, but I, I certainly will. And, and uh, well, Krista, I know that she's worked very hard. I don't know her. But I've been impressed with her tenacity. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe I try to get on there two or three times a week. Uh, I don't really know how to work it to, to come in and be stale. A lot <laughs> of times I'd like to do that so that I didn't. I mean, I, when they ask me to, to talk, I'm always happy to talk. But a lot of times I just like to listen. Yeah. And uh, so I, don't, I need to know how to, how to operate it better. Hey, you I like and I it. both, you know, I'll enter in from the hallway into one of the rooms and, you know, I try, I try to just stick low and typically it never fails. I could probably put it on a timer. It's probably about a minute or maybe two minutes in that I'm sitting in the room, sitting in the audience and someone goes to bring you up and it's like, well, I'm appreciative of it. Hey, great that, that you uh, think that I can actually, you know, contribute to the conversation. Great. But I'm like you, Bill. There are just moments that I I just simply want to be a fly on the wall, just kind of listen, see what's going on, <laughs> um, because there well, are many ideals that come from just hearing from other people. Well, that's how we all learn. I mean, yeah. and this gives us a chance that uh, I, I I probably see my old friend Larry Fisher more in the last three months than. I, on, I see him on Clubhouse, and I mean, Larry and I've been friends and partners in a couple of little deals and. I mean, it's just wonderful to see them and say, hey, yeah, you're still alive, you know, yo, coon. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bill, let me ask you this. Do you invest in, in um, obviously we heard you you have Dot .club but, and you had .org, but any other non.com like CCTLDs? Only very, very few, and they're really not investments. They're in, in markets that I might have, such as restrooms.wedding or something dot coffee like i own fort smith dot coffee well i live in fort smith arkansas so i didn't want somebody else to have that <laughs> only if it's a protection do I, I don't do it to sell and my wife has you know really made me take a look at all the stuff we have and so that what we have left when you see what my where my portfolio goes over the next two to three years, it's going to be so clean, and I don't know how we liquidate it, uh, <laughs> but it'll be it'll be something that uh, I, I'd be proud to have, and somebody would be proud to get these domains. Definitely, as Mike Seiger says, doing a doing a bit of domain uh, portfolio hygiene, cleaning up yeah. some things. <laughs> Boy, isn't he a stud, Mike Seiger? <laughs> Indeed. Well, he's been a help to me. How so? Well, just in, uh, you know, when he had Domain Sherpa, and uh, I would see him at a conference. He could always remember my name. He's always nice. And, and then if I had something, I, a question that I would have, then, of course, when he got the uh, the Domain Academy, the DN Academy, I, I joined up right away and then bought the lifetime membership so that I could support him. But I just think he's a quality class act, and he's he's one that gives back every day. Yeah, definitely, always always giving. And uh, actually, congrats to him as well because he recently sold i six sigma dot com, which is one of a, one of one of his publications that has. Uh, what, what's interesting just about that story of him starting it, selling it, buying it back getting rebuilding it and then now selling it again so definitely deserving of it so he certainly helped the the industry help and and helped the industry turn a uh, monumental corner and, and likely the reason that there are many more investors around that you know can can say they they actually put away uh bad do domain investing habits for for good ones so yeah, so very educational. Definitely, if you get a chance, you know, head on over to domainsherpa.com. Watch all of the early episodes, even the current ones, as well as uh, DN Academy to, 
you know, get your education of the buying and selling of domain. So yeah, so Bill, so then wrapping up, like what would be your advice to someone starting, you know, their journey as an entrepreneur or domain investor? Uh, like what would you tell them? Where should they start? Well, I would start in something I was very passionate about, something I knew something about. And if it's a golf club, it would be in golfclubmagazine.com. And it would be in something that I love to do. And I would stick in that game and I would figure out how I was going to monetize that. And I, I wouldn't jump over into the apparel business. <laughs> I, I, I just think being focused is which I'm not good at is what, what my advice would be. And, you know, I, I will tell you, there's there's a few other people that I've heard on your podcast. You know, you had Rob Monster on here not too long ago. And and I didn't know Rob until a few years ago. I don't remember. But, boy, the more I hear him, the more impressed I am. And, the, you know, I, I want to get to know Rob better because all of the tools that they've come out with, you mentioned the other day, you know, another guy that I think has been a real asset. And he's a younger guy in this business is Eddie Sixto, you know, yeah. or so. You know, I mean, there's just there's just people that are that will help. And so, my advice to the new domainer is to get better acquainted with some of us old coots. And you know, if you can save some of those bumps. And some of those valleys don't get as deep. Um, <laughs> you can reach me at Bill at McClure dot com. Bill at McClure dot com. My last name. How, how in the world? And when did you get McClure dot com? Well, Gary Chernoff called me or sent me an uh, email one time, a good number of years ago, and said, "Hey, Bill, I've got you. You know, Gary's an old domainer and got great domains." Um, <laughs> And he said, I own McClure.com. Would you like to have it? And I said, sure. So I called my sons and said, hey, we can buy this. I, I think it's about $8,000. I said, I'll buy a third of it. You buy a third of it. You buy a third so They said, Dad, we don't need that. You've got so many domains. We don't need McClure.com. <laughs> I said, well, all right. I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to give it to my grandsons. <laughs> <laughs> and their no, generation's been skipped. <laughs> And they, well, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they just didn't want to put out the money at the time. Yeah. You know? But <laughs> that's really, you know, it, it's unfortunate that a lot of our children don't see, I mean, they see the, the tough work we've gone through to buy these, right? but they don't appreciate what we might have. Yeah. It also makes me wonder uh, just about the very nature and the essence of where things are headed with the domain name, because, you know, to a certain extent, I'm like, man, like give it another decade, another two decades. And some of the domains that you hold, you know, today that you may not, you may not even really give much value to, you know, it's like the, the cremation services of, you know, 30, 40 years ago, no one was really thinking about it, but now here it is. That's something that's in play. And so the same thing with, uh, domain names to where, you know, even my kids, I mean, they're eight, six, and four. So they're really, really young, way too young to really kind of understand um, the ins and outs, the ebbs and flows of uh, what it is that daddy does. And so my hope is that in another 10 to 15 years that uh, a, a light bulb or two or three may come on for them to realize and go, oh, wow really okay so what's happening in the physical realm in terms of physical real estate at least you know make that metaphorical connection to what's going on in, in terms of uh digital real estate and, and just the online space that's the hope anyway uh but if not you know i'll have to i'll be sitting in the same seat trying to figure out okay well if the kids don't want them what are we going to do with these assets and how are we going to uh liquidate in a way that is a win win for uh, me as the seller, but then them as the buyer as well. And so that's likely what you're looking at, I guess, for, for the next couple of years. Well, yes. And I, I, you know, one of the things that we're going to listen to on this trip is the podcast that you had. Uh, you mentioned it, and I don't remember when I heard it, but didn't you have one on uh, continuity? Uh, 
what to do with your domains if you die or something like Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's the, uh, there was two. There was six steps towards digital estate planning. And then I had one with Michael Gargiolo about basic uh, death, taxes and so forth and just how do you hedge and guard against economic downturn with your domain portfolio intact see here's what i kind of like to do i know we're wrapping up here is i'd like to put my domains into a trust pay them up for 20 or put money there where they're paid up for 25 years and just set them on the shelf and if any of my grandkids ever want to take one off and sell it or do something with it. But I, I'm like, I'm very bullish on where this industry goes over the next 25 years. And I, I wish I knew how to sell them and make a living, but I'm, I'm past that really. You know, it's, I've been fortunate to have other income. Had I not had the other income, I probably would have learned how to buy and sell domains a lot better. But today it is what it is. So I'm hoping to be able to figure a way to do that. I have a legacy there. Well, that is awesome. Well, Bill, with that, I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to share with listeners? Well, I want to thank you, Alvin, for what you do. And I thank you for the invitation to be here this morning. And I wish you safe, safe goes and uh, good luck. Well, the same here, the same here. I know we'll be in contact and stay in contact. And so that we're out of time. But again, hey, thank you so much for being on here today and sharing your entrepreneurial experience. What a fun morning, Alvin. Take care, man. Indeed. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. And last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.